welcome to the lecture on casting design considerations. So, in this lecture we will discuss about what should be the considerations related to the casting design to have the casting free of any defect and we have the economical production of casting. So, what we need to know that successful casting practice for that you require proper and sound design of casting. If there is no proper and sound design of casting, uh, you will get the casting, but not with the optimum properties. So, for that uh, first of all when we start the casting process, we start with the selection of uh, you know pattern material, we select the pattern, we make the mold for that we make the design where to have the parting line of the mold, where to provide the core, what should be the gating channel design, what are the those aspects which are looked to be looked into. So, the one will be before melting and another will be after melting. So, before melting all these operations are required to be done like the proper selection of molding materials proper design of the cavity, proper design of you know the channel or network and then the uh, you know uh, pouring occurs. So, after pouring now again it depends that how you have done the at what temperature you have done the pouring and how the solidification will proceed in that particular network which is of certain uh, design. So, these are basically to be properly seen or addressed for that the designer who is there initially who is making the cavity he has all that in mind and then the metallurgist or foundryman who is practicing who is looking at the metallurgical aspect also making the uh, all these cavities. So, that basically a foundryman is doing testing all the materials ingredients of the sand then ensuring that it will lead to proper solidification of the uh, material. So, for that uh, there has to be proper understanding and they must know that what are the challenges faced by them on which issues they have to give the proper thought. So, that they can complement each other and they can understand the challenges faced by each others. So, you have the large number of variables uh, which are to be properly controlled for metals or alloys and its characteristics like uh, you have the method of casting, what method of casting you are choosing, you are taking the sand casting, you are taking the uh, die casting, you are taking the investment casting or so. It depends upon the what uh, kind of metal you are casting, what is the size of the casting. Uh, so, based on that you are choosing this uh, uh, method of casting. You are also choosing the mold or dye materials. Uh, so, that also will be based on what kind of material you are casting. So, if you are casting suppose low metal temperature low temperature materials and if you have to uh, go for the large production mass production you go for the dye casting then what kind of molding material if you are taking sand what kind of sand you are taking. There are different types of sand uh, may be based on the silica sand or zircon sand or chromite sand or so. So, you may have even in the dye materials you can go for which kind of dye material which type of material cast iron or you may have copper or you may have any aluminum as a dye material. So, that also again depends that what kind of material you are casting mold or die design. This is very important because uh, when you are pouring the liquid metal into it ultimately you are trying to have a good mechanical property of the cast metal. Now, once the cast metal goes into it uh, its property will depend upon how the solidification is taking place, how the other factors like the collapsibility of the mold behaves or core behaves and how the flow of the liquid metal goes into the cavity. So, if the flow is proper streamlined flow is there then there are less chances of having 
certain kind of defects and if they are a very abrupt you have abrupt sections if the design is not proper then that is going to create some defect kind of structures. So, these uh, different parameters are important when we talk about the um, casting of product and for that all these aspects they are coming under the uh, casting design. So, casting design is very important for seeing that the productivity of the industry is better, the, the number of rejections are less, the property which you would like to achieve you really achieve that. So, what are the considerations in uh, casting design? Now, casting design basically will be influenced mainly by the physical and the mechanical properties of the cast alloy. So, like physical properties means you have fluid life. So, that fluid life uh, will be important. So, the how, how long the uh, fluid uh, goes, how much will the fluidity. So, that that is important. So, because if the fluidity is not proper in that case there will be defects like misrun or cold shut appearing. So, you will have to have proper alloying elements which increase the fluidity many many a times or you will have to have proper temperature, you will have to have proper uh, conditions of the surface like uh, if it is a uh, die casting or if it is a permanent mold casting, they are the smoothness is better than the mold casting, sand mold casting. So, in that case the fluidity will be better if the metal is poured at higher temperature. So, that is why if the fluidity is more uh, you can have the intricate shaped castings possible in case of metal molds or die casting. But then if you use the coarse grains instead of fine grains in the mold which is and that too at the surface where the metal is flowing in that case the fluidity will be less. So, uh, these uh, factors are uh, important to be considered when you go for that. Solidification shrinkage as we know that uh, the metals solidify when the metals solidify they shrink. Now, again this is to be taken care of by proper consideration of riser volume or riser placement. So, riser size in one way and also the placement will be depending upon what will be the dimension of the riser, what is the feeding distance for that for a particular riser, what should be the optimum position where the riser should be placed. So, these are basically to be looked into and it is to be seen that these shrinkages are not appearing, they, there is no chance that shrinkage should be you know encountered. So, that will be the case only if you are not taking care of the proper casting design considerations like you are seeing that any channel which is the uh, chunky portion or the thick portion and it is aloof. So, during the uh, later stage of solidification it is aloof from the active feed channel. So, in that case the shrinkages may come. So, you will have to have proper positioning of the risers and proper you have to see that properly the, the, the solidification proce proceeds like the point is type of solidification. So, what kind of solidification? So, before that I mean the solidification has to proceed in a proper way, there has to be proper directional solidification. Then solidification type means you may have eutectic type of solidification, you have uh, the equivax type of solidification. So, that also is the uh, factor into it. Volume of casting, so you may have the casting either of a small size or of larger sizes. So, in the small size certainly the challenges are less, but if the sizes are larger you will have to have proper considerations for the position of the risers, placement of risers because in that you have the more chances of having defects like hot spots or so. So, that volume of casting is also important. Slag or dross forming tendency. So, many a times many of the materials have slag or dross forming tendency. So, they react with the atmospheric uh, gases or air 
and and even during the during its passes into the runner uh, because of aspiration or because of the gases present uh, you may it, they may form this slag or drosses. So, that also needs to be seen that you have to proper getting network proper network of the their the cavity yeah, I mean uh, network of the channel which is leading towards cavity. So, that you have uh, no slag or dress forming to the extent that it will hamper the quality of the cast material. Mechanical properties in that you have modulus of elasticity so that is the intrinsic property of the material. So, you cannot do much about it, but then the section modulus which is giving the stiffness to the casting geometry that is based on the casting design. So, what kind of design you are uh, uh, you know following what kind of uh, mechanism what is uh, you have using the ribs or waves. Uh, so, that you have the stiffness to the casting geometry is developed many a times. So, some good practices are preferred than the conventional ones where you simply want to make the geometry in the first way what it looks to be. But then you can have the rethinking uh, over how to uh, make the geometry little bit uh, different. So, that the stiffness is induced you get more stiffer geometries. So, that is also the aspect which is to be looked into. So, casting design in a nursery it requires planning in different areas like you have the functional design where we talk about other things like how to solidify, how to see that the rigidity is there, there is no uh, hot spot or all that. Simplification in foundry practices uh, that the things are simple you will have to make the casting in such a way that it is simple not very complex. Once you make it more and more complex more interdependence of the processes one after other in that case there are more chances of mistakes and then defects occurring uh, thereby. Metallurgical considerations so, uh, while during solidification or after solidification what are uh, the considerations which are to be looked into. So, that the defects are less and then above all the economic considerations also because ultimately your aim is to go for the casting which is uh, cheaper. So, because it has to compete in the market. So, you must look forward to make or to produce the casting at uh, the lowest cost possible. So, that is also a step towards the good casting design because the casting anyway can be done with more sophistication with uh, more of the flexibility and other things. So, in such a manner that you use more of the sophisticated instruments, but then if it is not economic economical in that case its sellability will not be there. So, that also consideration has to be kept in mind. Coming to the metallurgical considerations. So, what are these are the factors which are to be considered. So, just like you have the thermal properties of the mold. So, you can have the mold either is a sand uh, sand mold or you have the metal mold. In metal mold you have, have be different kinds of metal then you will have either permanent mold casting under gravity. So, gravity die casting or you may have the pressure die casting you may have the uh, mold where uh, sometimes we use also the cooling of the mold in some way like in continuous casting we use the cooling of the mold copper mold by copper so by water. So, this thermal properties of mold will be uh, changing the uh, structure of or the properties of the material in the sense that uh, in that case you have because of the different heat extraction rates the properties of the material or the structure of solidified structure of the material is somewhat changed. So, you get the different properties of the material. Freezing range of metal. So, as we know that as the freezing range becomes more the castability is decreasing. So, as the freezing range becomes more the requirement for the riser becomes more and more the chances of having shrinkage becomes larger. So, you will have to have proper practice to see by by adequate uh, positioning of risers very adequate size of the risers that the even for the higher range of freezing range of materials you will have to control these parameters. So, that your casting quality is unaffected. 
thermal conductivity of metal is affecting the solidifying pattern that we have already discussed because that will be I mean guiding the temperature difference or temperature gradient inside the liquid metal pool. So, that affects the solidifying structure. Then uh, shrinkage prevention or effect of rise risk. So, that already we discussed that this shrinkage has to be there once you have the formation or transformation from liquid to solid state. But then using the riser ring you can uh, decrease the shrinkage uh, ch chances. So, you have to have proper uh, riser ring calculations for that. Formation of hot tears, hot tears are the uh, defects because of the metallurgical regions and uh, it is basically uh, because of the situation in which uh, the liquid metal now the domain is full of uh, some solid network as well as liquid network. So, in that case uh, the solid uh, which has formed is basically quite weaker because the temperature is quite high just near the solidus temperature and in that case any tear or pull because of the geometric uh, you know configurations or because of the design the or, or because of the improper uh, you know properties of the molding material or core material especially. Then in that case that leads to tearing and so at that particular temperature when the strength is low the tearing may lead to these hot tears. You have the crystallization, so what kind of solidification mechanism takes place, what is the way solidification is proceeding, you have we know that solidification occurs by the nucleation and then further growth. So, depending upon the uh, type of solidification or rate of solidification you have different kind of solidification structure. So, you can have the proper uh, solidification structure to have optimum properties. Uh, control of directional solidification is another point which has to be looked into. So, for that you have the use of chills, you have the proper use of uh, padding and then you have to see that properly uh, you see that no of the none of the channel uh, portion is uh, you know quite distant away from the active feed channel. So, that way comes you can directional solidification can be controlled and that may lead to the good you know uh, casting because the placement of risers that will put the pressure and that will uh, lead to the sound castings. Otherwise, you may have the casting which is having the shrinkage. Next, uh, we have to discuss about the design considerations. So, when we are talking about the design considerations, we must uh, design the casting. Uh, or, or making the mold in such a manner that uh, uh, these are the points which needs to be kept into mind. So, that is one is that section thickness should be as uniform as possible. So, many a times what happens that we have the geometry in such a way that at some place the section thickness is quite high and at some places it is quite small. Now, in that cases uh, what uh, the problem may come is that the thinner sections may solidify early and the thick section in between that will certainly take more time. So, in that case you may have certain regions which uh, are isolated or where uh, there will be the change of that, that kind of the way solidification will proceed that will change. So, you will this is better uh, to have this consideration that keep the section thickness as uniform as possible. So, that will uh, that is a practice of good casting design. Concentrated concentration of metal should be avoided by making cord openings in waves and ribs. So, many a times uh, uh, we have concentrated metals and they are basically the positions where there is quite a good chance of having hot spot or shrinkage. So, uh, you should try to have the code opening there, use the waves and ribs so that it gives you sufficient strength. So, many a times we provide a chunky mass to have that uh, uh, you know that to keep in to, to, to bearing in mind that 
uh, we will, it will give us more strength. But then that can be avoided by using the uh, waves and ribs. So, many a times you have very chunky parts and then it is combined somewhere it is uh, like this. So, uh, you can in fact what you can do is you can have the code opening you may have this and, and then make such kind of uh, structures. So, so, this is basically preferred than this because you are giving this mass as the one which will provide you more strength, but it is better to have these code openings you have core here and then you have the ribs and with the help of that you give. So, it will give you quite a good strength. So, this is one of the good design practice which should be followed. Ribs or webs should be staggered to eliminate hot spots. So, that also you have to see that they should be staggered otherwise they may uh, result into hot spot. So, you will have to see that as per the design permits there must be good spacing between them and they should be staggered so that the hot spot is eliminated. Thin ribs should not be joined to thick sections. So, that also is one thing because we know that once we have thin and thin and thick section uh, you it has to be seen that the thin uh, has to first of all it will solidify first. So, depending upon that you will have to see that it should not be joined to the uh, very thick sections. Uh, you have to provide proper dimensional tolerance on the casting. So, dimensional tolerance should be there because you have to go for the you know uh, machining of the material you will have to take the material out of the um, you know when you have to draw it at that time you will have you need the draft allowance you when you make it uh, surface finished then you need the machining allowance. So, these proper allowances and tolerances uh, must be properly given tolerance means in the sense that you need to have the plus and minus limits must be there. So, that you can have that freedom that you can get that uh, particular value. So, the common rules which are there that always present a cooling surface and avoid sharp angles and corners. So, what it means that you must have the cooling surface um, should be there it is not that it is very isolated because it needs to extract the heat you know you must uh, have that means that it should extract otherwise if it is hot for longer time and uh, ultimately all the sides are all uh, solidified then you will have the chance of having that region isolated and there will be chances of having the defects in that. So, basically always you have to present a cooling surface avoid sharp angles and corners sharp angles and corners needs to be avoided. So, if you have such kind of designs so you have sharp angles and corners you need to avoid it and you make. So, they are basically not preferred. So, you need to have the streamlining like this. So, you have to have the geometry like this that you will see by in the figures later that how can we remove them provide fillet at sharp angle. So, if the sharp angle is there then you can provide the fillet at those places. So, that it is having a smooth transition is there proper spacing between ribs that is another uh, you know suggestion which must be followed proper dimensioning of inner walls should be there. So, that you have uh, you know uh, somewhat same kind of uh, space is there in between the inner walls and the molten metal in between in some of the uh, structures where the in between walls the liquid metal is flowing. So, the distance between the walls should be somewhat uniform. Uh, let us look at some of the figures which is here. So, if we see the these figures what we see is that you must provide the proper uh, you know uh, draft allowance. So, that there is no in, in this case if there is no draft what we see is that it is touching these 
uh, mold walls and there are chances of erosion of this sand when this is taken out. So, once we provide the draft allowance you see that uh, you, you, you have uh, successfully taken it out. Similarly, uh, you have this is a poor design because, because of these sharp corners and because of the improper radii. Uh, what you see is that uh, you have the chance of and this uh, hot spot. Now, why it happens because in those cases when you have such cross section. So, what happens in such cases the solidification starts from here and the growth takes place. So, solidification will, uh, will be uh, going on and in that case what happens due to these sharp corners what happens that in, in these regions there will be chances of hot spot formation because once you have the growth of the uh, grains in, in this fashion what happens this is the reason where all the heat which is liberated is released in this domain. So, this domain becomes the zone of high temperature slowly as the solidification proceeds, solidification will proceed. So, heat will be extracted here this way, here in this way. So, it will be uh, heat will be extracted, but then that will also be going in towards this because of the latent heat is released and uh, in, in that this portion being the chunky ones in the center it will have the hot spot formation that is what is happening in this case. So, in this case or in this case what we see is that in this case here the heat will be releasing like this and this portion will be having high temperature that similar thing happens here. So, what we do is we normally provide the radius here and we modify the design in that case what we see that the growth of the columnar grains they are not interfering. And in, in, in those cases what happens that that may interlock and that the growth of these grains may interlock and this region may be isolated towards the end. So, that is why this uh, region of hot spot is formed or shrinkage is formed. So, uh, we see that this, it can, this design can be improved by using some changes in the design. So, this is bad, this is good. Similarly, the parting line you try to have a straight parting line mostly as, as possible the design permits because uh, otherwise you will have the problems uh, in the case. So, this is also a, a good casting uh, design practice which should be followed in the case of design. Another example that we discussed is about the streamlining or giving radius that you see here that this is a poor design and this is a uh, good design that is uh, uh, seen in that case. Uh, similarly, what you see that once you have to provide the riser or the runner or you uh, provide the liquid metal through a certain zone in those cases this is seen that this is good and this is bad. Why? Because uh, this is the chunky portion and this is a thin section portion. So, uh, once you have done the pouring from this side or the riser is connected to this side then this portion is likely to solid first be solidified first and once this portion gets solidified first then uh, you know and then there is going to be defect likely in this zone which is the chunky one. Whereas, uh, in this case the liquid metal will be flowing from this side. So, this side when the metal comes it will solidify first and this will be the portion which will solidify in the end. So, that way it is seen that uh, this will provide you the uh, I mean correct uh, design and it will provide you the good sound casting. So, these are the normal uh, methods or normal rules which should be followed while going for the casting design. Then uh, coming to the economical considerations. So, this is very important because to uh, sustain in this uh, world competitive world you will have to work towards improving the economical uh, you know uh, uh, considerations economic aspects uh, every time. Now, what is normally the uh, total cost will be normally for uh, you can divide it 
on one is the tooling cost, another is rough casting cost and then the last is machining and finishing cost. So, uh, in the tooling cost you are basically you have the tools uh, which are to be used every time. So, basically the, basically the cost on that has to be prorated over number of pieces to be cast. So, if you have the order of very large number of pieces to be cast then you can think of the tools which are good one which are very sophisticated one. So, that way you can think of having such kind of materials. Similarly, you have uh, uh, to keep the tooling simple. So, and keep the coding minimum. So, so that uh, because if the things can be simplified, if you can get the results in a simple manner, then there is no need to have the uh, you know placement of course unnecessarily or so. Many a times uh, uh, we have we, we very if the uh, the internal cavity is smaller in dimension, we keep the course not required. If, I mean, uh, unless it has certain thickness, we don't need to have course. If the uh, casting has a thickness, if it is very small, it's better to economically machine that small holes. So you will have to have that in mind. Then the rough casting cost. So that basically has uh, to be kept in mind that you have to have keep lowest section thickness, use the closed tolerance. Uh, you have efficient design with maximum of saving, avoid metal losses during melting and casting. You see that the yield is maximum, so that you have the metal losses are minimum, so that you will have more yield. You see that uh, you do not uh, use large number of uh, you know um, risers which is not required or not very big runners or so, so that because they ultimately decrease the yield. Uh, reduce the direct foundry cost by simplifying the molding, core making and cleaning, fettling. These operations you can uh, simplify and reduce this direct uh, foundry cost. So, these are basically the, the uh, expenses which are related to the rough casting cost. Then uh, machining and finishing cost. So, for that you have to see that you are giving proper machining allowances, uh, so that uh, you have not to remove much of the uh, machining material and that is why you have not to spend much for the machining or finishing purposes. So, you can have a small amount of tolerance, uh, I mean you can have a small amount of these allowances, so that you have to remove a small amount of machining I mean material and you get the desired finish. So, similarly in the earlier we discussed about fettling and cleaning for that you must see that you have to do minimum, so that uh, the yield is also improved. So, these are the economic considerations which needs to be seen uh, and so that you get the good yield and the enhancement in the productivity of the casting. Thank you very much. Thank you.